All right, today I'm going to do a quick demonstration about the utility of a cheap inverter-based plasma cutter. I did uh, a test cut to warm up, and I have this set up. I'm making some pieces for this differential cradle that I've, i i got to get out to some customers. So I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to show people who might be interested in something like this and see if there's any utility to it. Now... Normally something like this would take uh, quite a bit of cutting and I don't know how many inches there are here. Maybe they're like eight inches worth of cut right here. But it would take it would take some time and it would eat up a cutting disc, which is like 90 cents if you buy them in bulk. But still, just give you an overall idea of how I set this up and what my results were. You could see the edge right here is this is uncleaned because I'll clean it when I chip it. But here's a piece that I'd cut. Um, and if you keep a good pace and everything, it comes out okay. So, this is a guide that I've developed. This little L, L guide is, is, is priceless because what happens is you pull it, you hit this knock, and then you keep going if, if you're making a right angle. Now, these, as you can see, they're a little bit bigger than the piece I actually need, but they have the exact angles. And... The chalk lines, well, this marker, this grinder line right here that I have marked gives me an idea of how much offset I need in order for it to run on my particular model. Every model has a different style tip or whatever, so this particular one's the Amigo Cut 50. Uh, it's been a while since I've used it, but I, I'm just using it with a regular, you know, Craftsman compressor. But this chalk line right here on the on my piece also tells me what offset to hold. So as you can see, this piece hasn't moved for two cuts and that's ballpark how far offset it was. And this piece has been moved each time I make a cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the chalk line here, follow a chalk line there and follow the chalk line there. And this offset should match wherever it is you want to cut. So the end result should be, if I line these up right here, more or less that depending on where the kerf ends up being you know there's a little bit of room for play as far as this piece goes because it's not up against anything and the hole is the hole placement is what's going to be critical but that's neither here nor there i'm going to go ahead and cut a piece and show you overall how it performs so Here I am, I'm gonna cut this piece real quick. Uh, normally I'd be wearing a respirator because there's a lot of dust involved. But just so you can hear me clearly, I'm not rest wearing a respirator for one piece. But I do advise a respirator anytime you're using a grinder or you know any kind of tool that makes and burns metal. Not super toxic, but the less carcinogens you inhale, the better. cutting time you got to watch on the uh the tip you can't just drop it because it's ceramic it'll shatter and you got to get new consumables speaking of which consumables for this particular model are dirt cheap all right
Okay. Now, the steadier your hand is, the better your results will be, just like in welding. I'll show you what all came about from this. Right? Well, I'm going to put this on. This piece that just fell. So the edges of them, they have this, uh, I'm gonna compare it to the piece that I was supposed to compare it to. And it's really close. So now, this glove is worthless. This is the glove I hold this in. You take a chipping hammer, you chip this edge. And there you have it. So this edge is fairly clean. Uh, see, it's not bad. Again, it all depends on how steady your hand is. See how the kerf is more or less 90 degrees? Give or take about five degrees. Well, this, this spot. Uh, these two pieces right here are exactly how I need them for the project I'm working on. So, like I said, the kerf is 90 degrees. It's a, it's v shape but it's a very narrow V. The thing you gotta watch out for is if you tilt the torch head at all, you're gonna get that plasma. It'll just cut through this metal like butter. This quarter inch right here. It'll cut through it like butter and trust me, it's a bad day. Um, if you're trying to get anything that looks decent. I'm, if you just, well, hold on a second. Sorry about that. So, like I said, it'll cut through it like butter. So watch out your torch head. Make sure it's actually 90 degrees to your working surface, nothing crazy. Because you tilt it at all, that's the direction the airflow will go and the air is plasma and it'll cut through that metal like butter, ruining your piece, unless of course, aesthetics aren't your thing so that's that anyways y'all have a good night and uh hopefully that was a quick demonstration that was useful to some people of how these cheap little plasma cutters are actually usable in a practical sense not just for big cnc plasma kind of applications all right guys take it easy